Our next sponsor is Share States. Share States has a recorded video here, and this is something a little bit different and exciting. I already watched it, and I was very excited to watch it. it very, it's going to be very interesting. Their topic is how to scale your real estate business to over 200 houses per year. Interesting. Michael Raymond and Raymond Davuti from Share States interview Charles Weinraub, one of the one of Long Island's most prolific residential real estate developers, on how to scale uh, your real estate business to over 200 houses per year. Um, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to start this uh, recorded webinar, and uh, so enjoy it. Let's get it going. Your biggest focus, single family homes or still commercial or both right now? I mean, we're doing a lot of single family homes. Uh, whatever I can get, really, you know, whatever, whatever I can really get. I mean, we're doing a lot of houses in all facets from rentals to new construction, a lot of new construction. Like, I don't even know what's going on. Like, I just got in the last like four days, I just got two pieces of land. I think I had a dormer guy just hit me up today. I'm going to be able to take that deal. I work like a lot of dormers and new construction. How do you fund all this? I raise private money. Or I come to share states. Oh. I think more on the... <laughs> <laughs> no, really. I said I'll, I'll share, the I mean, the share states part of the lending part, but how do you fund like the operations based on private equities? No, I, I raise private money. For, like I always, before I dealt with you guys, I, um, I always, and I still do, I, I raise private money. I was trained from day one to go out and raise private money. So I have kids that like I literally played PAL baseball with when I was like six all the way up to guys that own hedge funds and everything in between, fund my deals. That's great. Yeah, yeah. Well, because, yeah, because when COVID hit. And you, do you syndicate per deal or is it just specific to one person or one group? Everything, everything, it's on a deal by deal basis, right? No equity, straight debt. And, uh, and that's it. So like if I have it to close tomorrow, I can make a phone call and the money's there. Like that, that day, the next day, done. This is like on a round robin or you know which one's like which assets? Um, it's kind of like, yeah, I try to, I want to keep everybody in the mix. You know what I'm saying? I try to keep everybody happy, but it just keeps growing and growing and growing. Yeah. Like it's just, it's to the point where like there's millions of dollars waiting on the sidelines where people are like, I want to get in, I want to get in, I want to get in, I want to get in. That's amazing. Yeah, it's cool. I mean, listen, it's not that hard. Like it's That's really- a bunch of track record. You gotta, you gotta prove yeah, yourself. Yeah, all you have to do is deliver and everybody will tell everybody. There's way, like this is why I always tell investors. They're like, oh, I need an equity partner. I'm like, you don't, you don't need an equity partner, bro. I'm like, there is way more money chasing yield than people that are able to provide yield. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, without a doubt. Like you guys have a product where you're generating revenue for people. There's, there's big banks and people that are coming to you saying, yo, we gotta put money into work. Like this is what I try to tell people, which they don't understand. I'm like, think about this for a minute. There are people out there with so much money that it's actually hard for them to get it all out. Like imagine having so much money. And they that, get scammed. They find, they find people that scam them, so they get, you know. It's just, it's hard. Like if you have a hundred million dollars that you need to put to work, where the hell do you do that? You know what I mean? Yeah. Without I, risk. I always tell people, I said private money is the cheapest partner you can ever have. If you're getting, if you're getting hard money between even eight, even 10%, if you finish a project in six months, you're paying 6%. Any partner you have, you're paying double, triple that to split it yeah, with Yeah, equity. I've actually heard you say that. Equity is super expensive. Doesn't make sense to do equity. First of all, you have to deal with people that you don't want to deal with. Second of all, you're giving away a lot of profit for no reason. Doesn't make sense. No. That's Unnecessary. Call share estates. <laughs> Michael Ram. Shameless Michael, plug. Michael Ram is the best. No, <laughs> seriously. I, I would tell everybody, I told you and I tell this all the time. I'm like, dude, you are the and you are the best front guy. Whatever, what, what, like you are the best front, you know, salesperson. Like whatever you need, whenever you need it done, you're going to get it done. That's how it works. Yeah, though. you bring 20 deals. Like I just closed a, a 10 deal note package. No problem. Would you, I just bought a gas station. No problem. Thanks to refinance through share estates. <laughs> I'll use that. Cash what? out for the, and the gas station is the one you're turning into Roy Rogers? That's the one where, um, yeah. So it's with Roy Rogers. I have an LOI signed on that. It's with Roy Rogers Corporate right now. If it's the first Roy Rogers in Long coming Island? Coming back to Long Island. And so this is so dope. We're going to try to 3D print it. We're going to get the town to see if they let us 3D print it. So it's Roy Rogers. Is there dining or take out only? What's up? Is it is dining or no, just No, it's dining. It's 3,250 square feet with the wow. drive through It's big. It's where, do you see, where do you see the market shifting? Where do I see the market shifting? Dark meat. Yeah. With, with rates, <laughs> everything else, you think rentals are going to still be the product? You think still the home flipping, the ground up? Yeah. So I think we're going to have a great market. I think we're going to have a good market this year. I think we're going to have a good market next year. The rates are kind of spiking. 
Yeah, but it, it like real estate. That's the thing of people like things don't crash. Real estate is like a slow moving ship. There's a maximum like seven percent swing. It's not you that just, bad. Like if you're in the market all the time, you can like feel it. Like, I don't want to say that I predicted COVID because I didn't know what COVID was going to pop up. But I remember like yesterday, it was February of 2018. And I did like a hundred something deals in 2017. It was a show. I closed 10 deals in January of 2018. And in February, something just felt different. Like the banks were reacting differently. They were getting tougher on values. Like things were just- 18 or 19? What's up? 18 or 19? 18. 18. 18, okay. And I turned to my buddy and I'm like, the party's over. And he's like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, Q4 2019, there's going to be some kind of like a correction or something. I'm like, I feel it. I just felt it. And he's like, you're an idiot. Not going to happen. Now, I didn't think that a virus was going to sweep the world. But in Q1 of 2020, boom, there we are. You could just kind of feel like the ebbs and flows of when things just have to give. Like, you don't know what's going to cause it, but you know it's like time. So this year's going to be good. Next year's going to be good. You know, second half of the th of year three is going to be like start to get maybe like a little dicey. The year after that, I just think it's an Armageddon. I, you know, I think in five years we have eight to ten percent interest rates and just grinds 100%. it down. Hundred yeah. percent. I mean, I think the government up on this one. There's definitely a, a situation going on. Without a doubt, you can't just give money away forever. No. It's it's a not a one point five percent that a five million dollar house. No, forty percent of all the money was printed in like the last two years or something. It's and like, no one's keeping track of it. It's like, it's like what's the? There's no quantifying. What no, the, they're just giving it away. They're yeah. forgiving all of it. Yeah. Yeah. No. 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 Yeah. But listen. But this is like this is par for the course. It's, it's elementary supply and demand. If you have a lot of money everywhere, it's worthless. There's a major. I mean, listen. Everything moves in cycles. We've been a very low interest rate environment for a very long time. Like basically about 20 years. A typical real estate cycle is about 20 years. So now it's, it's time. Like, bro, people get pissed off about like 4% interest rates. My parents bought a house at like 14% in 1980, you know? Yeah. So that's, you know, we, you printed all that money. Now we got to go back up. But there'll always, there's always deals. There's always deals. Always Some, deals. People bro. pass away. People have divorces. People get. People get there's, there's always deals, yeah. but you just you got to be positioned in the right way. Like that's why I'm doing a lot of new construction now. In 24 months from now, I'm not going to go buy a tremendous amount of land to go do new construction. I don't want the exposure. But today, balls to the walls. This yeah. year, next year, balls to the wall. It's just, it's just, it, I, I agree with what you're saying. People think. People are exposed to a certain reality and they think it's a norm, right? And then, and then it's like, well, it, you know, money's 1.2%. That's not a norm. It's a cycle. No. You know what it is too? Like, I, my, I've been in business since I'm 23 years old. So I've almost been in business for myself for 20 years, which is nuts. At a very young age, I think. And I've seen, my father's been in business my entire life. So I've been blessed to see that, you know, that roller coaster that weird, yeah. of good markets, bad markets, good markets, bad markets, which is part of the reason why I live such a modest life because I know it's not good forever. Like historically, there's going to be a major correction every five to 10 years, seven to 10 years, whatever it is. But if you position yourself right when those things are hitting, you can, even, you can ride each one on. It's almost like surfing, right? Yeah, of course. And when the wave hits you, as long as you're riding the wave, you're good. But positioning yourself right doesn't mean on your best year ever, you go out and buy a crazy no, no, ass no. house. You have a wife, a girlfriend, it a Ferrari. Under, no, it's, it's under leverage. It's living modest. It's, it's making sure you're, you're, you're being realistic with trends and, and cycles. And what's like with, you said, you're looking at 24 months into the future and saying, if it's going to take me three years to do this, to do this project, where's it going to be in three years? Where's the world going to be in three years? hundred percent. Today, today's not tomorrow. You got to think about that. Yeah. But, like you and I take that for granted because we live this, 99.9% .9 of the rest of the country has absolutely no idea. Even if they own a business, they're like, oh, great, I made 250 grand this year. I'm going to go and get an Audi R8. I'm going to go take crazy vacations. But the day the money, it's always good if the money keeps coming, but all of a sudden the money stops coming and then they're screwed. Yeah. Right? Yeah, well, I, I got into this industry in 2001. We saw, we've saw we seen a good amount of cycles. And I tell the guys all the time, like, you don't know when it's coming, but like life is good and everything is like status quo. And then one morning you wake up and it could be COVID. It could be the NASDAQ. It could be the, 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 it could be the markets. All of a sudden it's like that. You wake up one morning and what you know is a reality is just like stops. Yep. And now what? Right? Yep. So it's like, it's like, it just, it's like 
Jesus. Like, actually, that's a perfect example. Now yeah. what? And, and, he, and he just stops. And it's years. Yeah. And you have to be with, like, you have to have. You have the, to acclimate. You have to acclimate the, and, and quick. Yeah. You, can, you, you have to have the can't. pockets to be able to carry it. Yeah. I think I think a general rule of thumb for us was always to make sure we had enough reserves to make sure we had our current living status in reserves for three years. Yeah, I mean that, stops to, that's world, very conservative, but that's if awesome. If the world stops tomorrow, you have yeah. three years of reserves to carry the same exact lifestyle. Then you're fine. Yeah, if yeah, you can do it out. Yeah, then then you have nothing to worry yeah. about. If you could do that, then you have you nothing to worry about. You give me balls to the walls and every check. You can't live paycheck yeah. to paycheck. I mean, I was gonna say twelve months. Like twelve months, I feel is conservative. Three years is amazing, but the average American can't do that. The average no. American is just buying. They don't need like just, you know, just the concept of this money's burning a hole in my pocket is insane. Yeah, like, it's like leave it, leave it. If you have so much of it that it's burning a hole in your pocket, fine. But there needs to be like this rainy check, rainy day, dude, reserve account. That if the world goes to shit, yeah, like, you know pa- what? I could just sit back for three and I'm good. My father calls it money. But like, think about it. If you're making two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year, and then you have to pay taxes, so you're down to like one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year, and then you have like two kids and a wife or whatever, like you have no money, bro. Like you're negative. Yeah. Yeah, you don't. Like, I, I know people that are making, like, you know, 60 grand a year that are driving around in a $1,000 a month BMW. It's like, what are you doing? They do it. Yeah. Makes no sense. You know? It's because they're stuck in that norm. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, we're, and, and, we're and, programmed and, as a society just going back. Yeah. Well, so. I, I grew up in a world where people saw that. And then I, I, I remember even, like, 15 years ago or 20 years ago I'd look at some of these guys and they were like they would, they'd spend the money they're making yeah and I'm like what are you doing like you don't want to save some of it and they're like, they're like no man I figured it out like, like, like this like, and I didn't go to school to learn this this is, how, this is how you make money I'm like I'm like, you learned one facet of one business and one cycle yeah right and, and you're right it's great but like what happens if it stops like why would it stop it always stops. I'm like, I'm like, is that your fault that stops? The Bruh. world just stops sometimes. Yeah, like I had, a, I, and that's why I And that's the guy that goes from a Z4 or an, in, in, like a BMW Z4 in 2001 yeah. to like a Honda. Yeah. And he goes from a penthouse to a co-op. Well, this is why you need a very diverse business strategy to bring it back to real estate. Like this is why I do all different things within real estate. Like I have a buddy that's very like short sale centric. And before this whole COVID thing, I'm like, Bro, doesn't it make you nervous that like you only that's only what you target? He goes, no, nah, short sales are never going away. I'm like, they of might. I'm they like, are. tomorrow the banks might just say, you know Forget what? It. We ain't doing this anymore. Then how are you going to acquire? He's like, that's never going to happen. COVID hit. Forget it, done. Yeah. Yeah. Or you know, let's say guys that go to auctions and just chase houses at auctions. COVID hit. Bro, two years. Most of those guys I know, the big auction guys, they like went on vacation. They just, they were gone for two years, literally gone for two years. They didn't know what to do. There was nothing to do. What are you going to do? There was nothing to do for them because yeah. they didn't develop a network, social media, you know, driving for dollars, in-house call center, mailers, none of that. Paid social media, whatever it is. Yeah. Radio, TV, et cetera. I think it's good. It's the best market if they know you and they like you and they relate to it in some way. And it's still hard to buy a lot of houses by my standards. It's still hard to buy like two, 300 houses a year. Like that is hard. It's a lot. Yeah. For me with the 200, I, draw, I, I put it into four different blocks. So of 50. So this is like my plan of attack on how to get to the, to, to the 200. 50 new construction subdivision houses. So 50 new construction houses. 50 from like in-house sales guys and like marketing. 50 from realtors and 50 from wholesale relationships. So if I can get those four buckets, if I can cultivate those four buckets to fill up 50 each, that's how I get to 500. I mean, do you, have a, do you have a specific criteria of deal? Like, does it have to make like $50,000? No, nah, no, nah, I don't really care. Like, I never talk about the money aspect of it because I don't, I just never think it's a good idea to talk about money. Um, but for me, it's more of like a machine. Like, I have to feed the machine. So if I feel comfortable, I'll, I'll throw something in with like slightly slim margins. But I tell everybody out there, I'm like, don't do slim margin deals no. because they'll blow up, bro. Like two by fours go from three bucks to eight bucks and all of a sudden you're losing yeah. money. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, a lot of guys are that. A lot of them with gut renos um, or if it's not a gut reno, sometimes buy a house. You go inside, you open one wall and you're like. Yeah, that's if, why I would rather gut it. Like either I'm the thing. Like there's really no in between because it just costs too much. You're not really saving money and what you're getting out of it. Like the days of I'm going to put 50 grand into a house are gone. Yeah. Like there are houses I used to do a particular reno to style house. 
I used to cost me 115,000. That same reno today from like two years ago is costing me 160. Wow. Same reno. And keep in mind, I have in-house electricians, in-house plumbers. I own my own kitchen cabinet company, so I get 60% off the list price. I own my own permit business. Still cost me that kind of money. Captain Permit. What? What? Best permitting company. I, I got to plug you now. Best yeah, permitting. Thank you. Appreciate it. 516-513-8838. So, <laughs> yeah, it's expensive to do this. Right. And then you started using designers also. So your, your flips don't look like the average flip. No. So we have, uh, yeah, I use an interior designer. You stage them? What? You stage the houses? Nah, that's, that, I think that's a waste of money personally. So what, is that, what does the designer do? She picks out all the, all the tile designs, kitchen cabinets, all that stuff, pink colors, the whole nine. So every house looks different. They walk into an experience. Yeah, no, without a doubt. But it's, it's a different experience. When you, when you show the homes, it doesn't look like a, like a Home Depot special or something that people no. call it. People, you, see the, you see the flooring tiles, you see the backsplashes, you see the bathroom tiles, they're all different. They're different in the homes. I think when someone comes in and they realize that it was built like that, they, they feel more attached. They're like, oh, it's nice. This is what I've seen on TV or I've seen somewhere yeah. else. The and home. listen, it doesn't yeah, have home. to be expensive. Like you can get cool stuff in Home Depot. It doesn't have to be very expensive. But listen, I'm colorblind and I don't have taste when it comes to like tile combos. So I don't do it. I don't try to do it. You hire a designer. If it costs you five or $600 for a house or seven or 800, even a thousand dollars per house. And she goes to Home Depot, picks everything out for me, coordinates my construction team, works with my foreman, you know, works with the architects, puts it all together. I don't have to deal with it. Amazing. Win. Yeah. Yeah. And it helps sell the house quicker. Exactly. From when you first started doing the homes without the designer to when it changed, did mm -hmm. it change people's like... Well, I always used the designer, but I used to do it differently. What I used to do is every year a designer would come in and I'd say, get me four kitchens, four bathrooms, like, you know lay it out for me and we just use the same ones over and over and rotate through them. Now, when I was like, I want to take it to another level, we actually have a designer designing each house. And then owning the kitchen cabinet company, is that special? Because one, a lot of the guys I speak to, flippers and everything, like yeah. I can't get my supplies. So like kitchen cabinets was for a bit, people were having yeah. difficulty getting kitchen cabinets, yeah, appliances. it's still a problem. So even having your own kitchen cabinet company still takes forever or it's not bad? It's the same thing. It just, because they're all coming in from China, right? So I'm just essentially like a reseller. So I'll buy um, shipping containers full of this stuff because we do so many of them. But the big thing is I save money. Like I get, if you're, there's obviously there's a list price and then there's a discount. So let's say if you're going to, you know, any kitchen cabinet place, maybe you'll get a 10% or a 20% off a list. I'm getting their cost, 61% off list, 60% off list. And then you do the same thing with like bathroom fixtures and everything? Uh, the bath, a lot of the bathroom fixtures I get through, um, through Lowe's and Home Depot because it's just cheaper. Like if you get a cabinet through one of those places, then you have to have a top put on and that costs money and it's just more to manage. Lowe's and Home Depot have like, especially Lowe's, Lowe's has some nice vanities. You could just go there. Yeah. But yeah, you need systems for this stuff. No, it's crazy what you put together. It's, it's really unbelievable. Thanks, man. Just, I, I've seen a lot of flipping operation at this point from the amount of stuff we've lent on over the years and you've seen everyone's operations. It's one of the most impressive because you also share all of it. So when you're on your social media, you meet your whole team. Like I, I yep. feel like I know your office, even though I don't really know them. Yep. And it, it's cool. And then you even right now, you guys are building a, the new office in Farmingdale. Yep. And it just looks like you're, you're filming content in the office while they're building. It looks yeah. like you guys are working in the office like while they're. Yep. So, so. yeah, we, we just moved to this office, 7,000 square feet, double podcast studio. It's, we're fully integrated. So we have permitting, we have construction, we're building an in-house acquisitions team. Uh, we have property management because we have a significant rental portfolio. Oh, shout out to Share Estates who just refinanced 30 of those properties. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we have the creative team. And as it grows, the creative team is just going to grow bigger and bigger because what I realized recently is how important the marketing engine is and how marketing is changing so much and how you really need like your own media company. Otherwise, it's just you're paying so much money and it doesn't really make sense. So yeah. Flipping houses is a great business, bro. Real estate is a great business because it can be as big as you want or as little as you want. It could be a great side hustle. Like you can flip a house a year and put your kids through college or, you know, it, it's just, or you could be psychotic like me and want to do 200. One of, the, one, of the first, one of the second or third houses we did when you mentioned Roosevelt, and I was like, wow, 450 is crazy. We bought a cape on Pennywood. Oh yeah, yeah, Pennywood. Pennywood, 113 Pennywood. We yeah. bought it for $83,000. Yeah. And sold it for one twenty-five, and we're like throwing a party. Bro, 
It is. What is? What's going After on right now? After closing costs and concessions, we made four dollars. You guys did that huge refinance, <laughs> me. We're doing like 30, 30 single family homes. Like three, four years ago, I was buying houses in Mastic for fifty thousand dollars that you guys are appraising for three fifty, three seventy five today. That nuts. That is nuts. Where else can you make that kind of money? Nowhere. You can't. With government tenants, with the government paying you. NFT? Is it? <laughs> NFT. Uh, it looks like we talked about the market changing. A lot yeah. of people are getting into this space or find the space more valuable because they see companies like Blackstone, BlackRock, everyone going in and buying single family homes. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's going to help this market or you think it's going to with them and with Zillow coming in and then coming out and then going in and out and all the other stuff? That Zillow shit was never going to work. I was like, I can't believe they're doing this. Really insane, that Zillow stuff. You cannot buy volumes of houses across the country with an algorithm. Real estate is just. It's too one on. It's too one on one. It's like this house is in this condition. It's on a corner. It's location. It's like you can't you can't do that. It just it doesn't it doesn't work. I will say that I remember when I first got into this, everyone was like big into apartment buildings, and I'm like I'm going to be an evaluate apartment building investor. I'm going to be sexy. And Carl turned to me, my mentor, and he's like, "You'll never make more money than with single family homes, renting single family homes." And he was right, dude. The returns that I've got on single family homes are absolutely bad. Manage, you'll never, never, ever get it. I mean, I remember like four years ago when like Hubzu and Zome and all those websites, like nobody would touch them. I was buying houses. So I was, I guess in real estate in every business, you have to take advantage of the arbitrage. Like what's the new thing that other people are afraid to, to do that you could take advantage for like 12 to 24 months before it gets saturated. So I jumped on the buying houses at au online auctions like real early. So I remember buying a house in Patchog. Patchog, Patchog School is in the, in the village for 70 grand on an auction site with people in it. I turned them into tenants. I put 20 grand into it. The bank at the time appraised it for 250. Wow. Today, they just appraised it as part of our package for $450,000, four years later. I bought that thing for 70 grand. Wow, that's great. How much did you put into it? 20. Holy The people that were in it were the ones that were foreclosed on. The, the, the woman was foreclosed on, her husband left her, she couldn't pay, she got foreclosed on. When I went there to introduce myself to them, she has a new boyfriend, the guy works for Con Ed, he makes 150 grand a year, hey, you guys wanna stay here? Yeah, all of a sudden, those people are now my tenants. That's amazing. And the, yeah. you mentioned a couple of times, you have some, certain tenants from like day one, they're still there and you said- I have some day ones. Yeah, I do have some day ones. I have, uh, I, have a, I have a lot of day ones, actually. Because if you do a nice job and you, and you treat them right, why are they going to leave? There's, there's no reason. Can't find housing anywhere here. No, you can't. But the rental game is huge. I mean, flipping houses can make you a lot of money, but you're basically just buying a job. Rentals will, will take care of your kids, 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 kids. There's just no question. Like, if I had kids today and, God forbid, I died tomorrow, like, my kids would inherit a portfolio of over 100 rental properties and they would never have to work. Like, I don't have to work now if I don't want to, depending on the kind of lifestyle I want to live.